Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Now, if you've been watching the Nintendo Power Perspectives, you know that at long, long last, school is over for the summer. I've got my finals done. I can kick back, relax, have a nice cup of. He has a notes in the summer, but hot chocolate nonetheless. A little hot chocolate and rich coffee. And play some video games. And indeed, I have completed a video game. I want to talk about it. I have beaten and played up most of the way through, aside from one world, which I'll get to in a moment. New Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo DS. And that game is very enjoyable. It's fun. So what makes New Super Mario Brothers so new? Well, unlike the Mario Brothers games, the Mario games that have been part of the franchise since, well, Mario 64, it is a 2D platformer. It is a purely 2D platformer. There are three-dimensional sprites that are used. Rather, these sprites are based on 3D character models and that sort of thing, but it's a it's a 2D game. It has a structure very similar to, for example, um, Mario Brothers 3, and which I have already covered on the Nintendo Power Retrospectives, and Super Mario World, which is to come. And so it, it, it's got a kind of structure of different worlds, like with Mario 3, but kind of a non-linear way of going through it, where you have your overworld map, you go from world to world, and there are alternate routes you can take. And the power-ups are also changed. The suits are gone. Uh, unlike Mario 3. No Tanuki suit, no Raccoon Mario, no, no nothing quite like that. But there is a suit. There's a um, Koopa ship, Koopa suit. And that's the, that's the only suit in this game. And we have... Um, Instead, we have two different new mushrooms that you can use. Um, there's the mini mushroom and the mega mushroom. So, the normal super mushroom in Super Mario Brothers makes you big. Takes you from regular Mario to Super Mario. Let you, and in turn, lets you take two hits. Um, the mega mushroom, on the other hand, makes you absolutely huge. Your Mario sprite fills the, literally, almost literally fills the screen. And you just walk along and you basically can't be hit. Anything you hit, you destroy. Power-up blocks, uh, cushion mark blocks, um, normal blocks destroyed, enemies you walk through are completely taken out, no matter whether you could there are anything you really damage, like the um, skeletons, they they all just go away. And as you destroy things, you fill a meter on the top of the screen. And every like two blocks you fill on that meter, based on how much you destroy, will get you a one-up that will drop down from the top of the screen after you return to your normal size. You get a certain degree of... and you have a certain amount of time, like a few seconds, before you restore, return to normal size. It's kind of like invulnerability on steroids. Um, the the um, invulnerability star. This doesn't mean that, like with the invulnerability star, you can't die. If you fall into any pits, at super size, you you die. Um, it's kind of there's a bit of weirdness with this in terms of um, that with normal size Mario and uh, and Super Mario, there are small gaps you can walk over if you're at running speed, but there isn't really anything quite like that in this game um, in terms of with the Mega Mario. Um, so you do have to still do platformer, and that can slow you down. Uh, additionally, um, the mini mu the mini mushroom makes you really tiny. Um, this, now, with this, you die in one hit, but you can access areas of the level you couldn't access otherwise, including smaller pipes, small little passages, and that sort of thing. Um, things which are so small that even perhaps 
um, regular Mario might not be able to go through them. Additionally, at the end of every even-numbered world, not even a world, it's worlds, it's worlds like, like 2 and world 4, sorry, world 2 and world 5, uh, so prime-numbered, pretty much, um, with the exception of 7. It splits, it branches. They, they can go to either, like, world 3 or world 4, and then they, the two paths are united again at world 5. And these branches, you can access the other branch by beating the level as Mini Mario. Uh, you, in this case, in particular, the final boss fight at the castle in Mini Mario. And in order to get into that boss fight, you have to be already be Mini Mario, like before you go through the door that gets you to there. So you either need to have a Mini Mario mushroom in storage, or go through the whole level that way. At which point I must talk about, might as well talk about the storage system. Um, like with Super Mario World, you can have one power-up in storage, uh, which you can access during any level. Um, in this case, you tap a button, tap the relevant area of the touch screen with your thumb, really straightforward, just stick your finger over from where it is on the deep, uh, on the controller buttons, and the power-up will drop down basically right over where your character is and let you get it, as opposed to Super Mario World where it drops right down from the middle of the screen. And this works very well. Um, the tricky bit is kind of uh, the power-up management in terms of, um, well, if you already have a power-up active, and then you collect a power-up. If the power-up storage spot is open, you will send the power-up to there. Um, and unless, yeah. So it kind of leads to a situation where you have your power-up open. So I guess the way to describe this management is it's sort of like dealing with power-ups in Contra or something like that, where you have the, you have the Fire Flower. And you hit a power-up block, and it has the, the turtle suit, like the Koopa suit. And so you, the decision is, if you get it, you'll get a thousand, pick it up, you'll get an additional thousand points, and the suit will go into storage. But if you don't like that power-up, say it's like, say to how your play style is, it's as effective to you as... A rapid fire shot, for example, is in Temple and Contra where it's not much additional use, then you don't want to get it. Because you want to leave that storage spot open for the for the fire flare if you find one. But on the other hand, kind of the management here is if you have a Koopa suit in storage or whatever, while you have the fire flower, if you take a hit and you activate the Koopa suit, you get that extra hit back. And you, the Koopa suit serves to the Fire Flower. If you get hit while having it, you revert back to normal Mario. It, so even if the power-up isn't useful, you still have the extra hit, if that makes any sense. Um, alternatively, some levels are simply not useful if you're playing as Mega Mario. Um, in terms of having to duck to go... Th in terms of having... If you have to manage a whole bunch of like triangle jumps and that sort of thing, then the Mega Mario, the Mega Mushroom isn't helpful. So if you have a Mega Mushroom that ends up in storage, what? Because uh, you've got it from a power up uh, building, a, a Toad House, on the world map. You have to find a place to get rid of it so you can put a more useful power up there. All this sort of stuff. Uh, this leads me, by the way, to another thing: a game mechanic, which I just mentioned the triangle jump. Pretty much all of the previous Mario games for the 2D platformers go. Mario runs and he jumps, and it's a normal jump, and there's nothing really particularly exaggerated to that, and very special about it. Um, this game adds a Metroid-esque triple jump, or a triangle jump, where you can go between narrow areas by doing a triangle jump straight up. 
It's like any other triangle jump. You jump towards the wall, hold the directional pad in the direction of the wall, hit the jump button again, and, and you bounce off in the other direction. You manage that and go back and forth and to get through an area. If you've done a triangle jump in a game before, it works the same way here. But it does change up the level, level design a lot from what you normally expect from a Mario game. As I mentioned a couple of times, I'll talk about the last suit as well, the Koopa suit. It gives Mario a Koopa shell. And what this basically lets you do, in certain places with a running start, with sufficient running start, you can duck down and slide back and forth like a turtle shell, like a Koopa shell. I was never, ever able to consistently get this to work. It's potentially a really useful power that lets you access certain areas of the game or get certain power-ups that you couldn't do otherwise, but I wouldn't say it's worth it. Not at all. I I generally just used it to give me an extra hit that I could withstand more than anything else. Um, other than that, the other major game mechanic thing that they add is each level has three star coins in it that you can collect. Something will come across the normal way of making your way to the level, normal course. Some of them you have to take little branching side routes or find a, um, take a pipe to access a certain area or not take a pipe to access a certain area to get the coin and then so forth and so on. Eat, once you have five coins, you can either out unlock alternate routes or unlock areas to toad houses, which can get you additional power-ups or a bunch of one-ups or anything like that. So that's pretty much everything, all the major significant mechanical significances there, to the changes from earlier Mario games. Like Super Mario World, it has saves. Uh, the saves happen based on how certain points in the game. Once you clear a castle, you get a save point. Either a castle or a fortress, you get to save. Um, and the additional th this thing is if you unlock a route using coins, it also gets saved there. So um, basically, as far as you're, you're collecting coins, and they're part of your star coins as part of your resource management. You use your five coins to unlock an extra route now, or do you wait until later when you're running into problems and you want to save so you don't lose the progress? that you've gained since the last castle, that sort of thing. Um, and that's the main ask. that's all the really significant nuts and bolts, nitty gritty, how the game is played, stuff that's changed from Mario 3 and Super Mario World. So does the game work? Um, kind of. My complaint about it is basically related to the save system. For a game that's being played on a mobile device, be it my DS or 3DS, um, whether, this, whether this was on a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance, whether it's being being played should Nintendo ever decide to make games or have games ported for handheld for like your smartphone or tablet, it's a device meant to be played on the go. It's something that works in you have to be able to play it in bite-sized chunks in some form or another. Um, whether it's doing a bit of grinding in your RPG on your phone and then doing a quick save of the phone or um, your DS or PSP or whatever, and then doing a quick save when you have to stop playing, um, or just doing a couple of really short missions in strategy RPG or anything like that. It's a, it's a device that's meant to be really used on the bus, or on the train or subway, depending on your local mass transit system. Something to be used while you're sitting in a waiting room at a doctor's office. Things like that. It's meant to be you. It's a device that works best when you have the time to sit and play it. Or long car trips when you're not the driver. Because obviously, if you're playing a portable game system while you're driving, you're an accident waiting to happen in so many ways. Um... But nonetheless, games on handheld systems work best in bite-sized chunks, particularly if it's a longer game. And this game took me about 8 to 10, maybe 12 hours to beat. Um, 
But yeah, about eight hours. About if if I was to get through all, if I was to go through every world in the game without continue, without having to continue, but still dying a few times as I learned the levels, you could say on average about an eight-hour game experience, um, more or less. So. That's not in the, that's not necessarily a bite-sized chunk thing. I mean, you'll kind of get the checkpoints along the way. So, assuming fifteen minutes to thirty minutes to reach the midpoint of each level, it kind of works, sort of. I'd still like it if the actual given save points were more often, like after you clear a level. As opposed to having to do with the star coin collection, which can relate as much to player skill and luck as it does to other elements. So, mm, I enjoyed it. It's okay. Would I recommend buying it? Not really. Partic particularly since the other games in the series have game series continued onto the 3DS, onto the Wii, the Wii U. I think this game certainly merits a rental, especially considering that Gamefly rents DS games. But, like, I think, like, last time I checked, when I was at my friendly local independent game store, uh, Game On, in Tigard, or Game Star, sorry, in Tigard, it's, like, 40 bucks currently. I haven't checked eBay for comparison prices. So, I mean, it's certainly worth playing. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing it. I had a, I was felt satisfied when I beat the game. But, that's pretty much it. The other issue is with, um, listen, the reason they say I didn't completely clear it is there are branching levels that you can get to with your five coins and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't go through all of those, and additionally, it is possible to, like, miss an entire world if you don't beat, like, World 7, like, I'll put this, the branching worlds can be opened when you beat the worlds at the front and end of their branching path. The difference is that World 7 is, it's the front end of its branching path is, uh, well, the end of its branching path is World 8. And, which means if you beat that, you beat in the game, and it start, goes over to um, New Game Plus mode, basically. Sort of like with how in, in Super Mario Bros. 1, you could go through a new version of the game where, like, there's um, vines that take you up to new areas where the start of World 1-2 has, instead of Koopa Turtles, it has the uh, Koopa Troopas, it has the uh, Buzzy Beetles, and that sort of thing. What makes a difference if you've gone through and you have you had the fire flower before and now they you're dealing with enemies that are resistant anyway. Um, so it's new game plus after you beat World Eight, which means you can't get to World Seven this time. This could be a pain in the neck if you or just otherwise make it so you can't beat World Seven that normal way. So anyway, long story short, the uh, the game is good. It is enjoyable. The game is certainly worth playing. Wouldn't say it's worth forty bucks. If you see it for less on eBay, like twenty, fifteen, twenty, certainly worth picking up that way. If it's if you find it at a garage sale, again, definitely get it. But otherwise, I'd say get it through a service like GameFly. Certainly worth picking up that way. Um, so that's this episode. I'm currently making my way through the Hugo Award nominee readings. Um, so I'll be getting book reviews of those out as I get through them. Additionally, um, I should have, hopefully, by in two weeks, I should have stuff together for a review of Max Payne 3, which I've beaten recently. It's not exactly science fiction, which is where I usually cover science fiction and fantasy, which is my usual material that I cover, but I figure it's worth, worth taking a look at anyway. So, I will see you then. And, of course, next week, new issue of Nintendo Power Retrospectives. I'll see you then. 
Oh, and one last thing, please make sure to like, favorite, share the video, and please, if you'd like these videos to come out more often, if you'd like me be, to be able to have a DS system or 3DS system that will let me capture gameplay footage so that I can have video for these instead of just being a talking head, or any number of similar things, please feel free to support me via Patreon. There'll be a link at the bottom of the video. Thank you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.